What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I went about filling in all the gaps of the surrounding bezel for the climate control. Previously, I did a video showing how to upgrade or swap out the climate control of the W204 to a W207 climate control. In that video, I showed you guys how to remove the climate control from the W207 bezel once it's removed, and then also how to remove the W204 climate control from the surrounding bezel, and also how to remove the bezel from the W204. In this video, I'm going to show you guys step by step how I went about filling in all the gaps. Taking a look at the picture in the corner right now, you can see that after uh, fitting the W207 uh, climate control to the W204 bezel, it still had a lot of gaps because the W207 climate control obviously isn't built for the W204. I had to come up with a way in order to fill in the gaps. I ended up using a product called Sealy's uh, Repair Compound. It is a, a repair compound in which you knead together and once it is kneaded together really well like bread dough, it obviously has a chemical reaction and after about half an hour it gets very hard. This is the compound that I'm talking about right here. This is what I used. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I went about filling in all the gaps. This is the product right here. So this is what I used here. It is completely flush. I've sanded it all back. I've cut a little bit off and all I've done now is knead it in my hand. Wear some gloves. You can use your fingers after, but make sure you wash your hands really well after. You just have to knead it all in until all the green on the outside disappears and the compound on the inside, this white stuff, is all mixed in together really well. Okay, so you just keep kneading it, kneading it, you know, kind of like making dough. Just keep folding it in until all that green is mixed in really well with the white. Okay, so as you can see here, I have finished kneading it in my hand. Now it is going to be much easier to just use your bare hands. Now we're done kneading it. As you can see, I have wrapped the control in painter's tape. That way I can uh, handle it really well. I'm going to put another strip over the top. That way I can keep touching the whole thing without it um, dirtying the um, controls. Put some painter's tape just to cover the buttons. I'm just going to tape everything now, as you can see. All right, get it covered everything now. Now that's all covered. Now, to handle it with our bare hands, we'll mold it, we'll get it in the little gaps, knead it in, push it all the way in. We're going to push it in, keep pushing it in until I get it flat as possible. Push it in, knead it, keep kneading it. Make sure you get a nice good amount. We'll push that in. Okay, push it in. Fold it over because we don't want much on the surrounding bezel itself. We just want enough to cover it up. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I have enough to cover the bezel. Just keep kneading it, kneading it. I'm gonna push it as flat as I can here. It sticks really well, guys. Knead this together here, overlap it. So, that. so now that we have that kneaded together, what we're going to do now is remove this and draw a straight line across. That way we know exactly where we want our compound. I'm going to draw a line across where my compound needs to sit flush, okay. Take it off now. And once we take it off, it'll break off, and then you will know where the line is. See, there we go. What I'm going to do now is stick it all on, build it up so that I can shave it back down. Because you, you need it to stick onto your bezel. You need it all back together. Grab the rest of this compound here and we will build it so we cover the gap entirely. So we need a long thin line. I'm just going to keep building it across now. Then I'll knead it all together. When this dries, it dries extremely hard guys. This is the first time I'm ever using this product so um, bear with me guys. We'll see how it turns out. And yeah. Hopefully, it comes out really nice. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm getting a, a decent layer across the top. That way it has something to stick to because you don't want just a very thin layer there because if you do that, it's not going to um, stick really well. So you want to cover a decent area. Try to knead it so that the um, compound doesn't separate. For instance, notice this line here. I'm going to get rid of that line by kneading it over it. As you can see, I'm just going to keep kneading it over so it becomes one piece. Okay, there we go. Any extra is just all going to come off anyway. I'm going to end up shaving it all off, any extra. Okay, so I press it down here so that I get it flush with the top. I don't need all this extra bit. So I'll push it down because there is a line across the top there. It's going to simply cut there. Right, so here I'll push down here and as you can see it cuts it there because I don't need all that extra. Alright, there we go. Okay, now we do a quick test fit to make sure that it's uh, straight along there. You know, it's a really good idea here to use a uh, painter's tape here guys. We're going to push that against it now so we get the shape we want. We'll start from the side, push it down. We want the shape. So now that I have it almost the same, I'm going to push it in and get that shape I want. Push it over so it's all fitted in. There you go, it's all fitted in now. And then once it dries now, I'll have the shape I want. I'm just pushing it down here to make it flusher. Okay, it's all right. I'm gonna end up shaving all of this off anyway. But you do want a decent mount on there so that you can control. You know, now look guys, this is my first time doing it as well. So, you know, I don't know exactly the best way to do this. I'm just learning and showing you guys how I'm trying to do this. I'm just trying to get it as flat as possible here. Okay, there we go. Now we're just going to leave it to dry and that's it. We'll come back to it and then uh, we'll shave it. I'm just going to cut this much off here. Take it off as I do not need that much. Okay. And then um, I'll just leave the rest on because I will uh, end up shaving it all off. As you can see there, there is a, a bit of of this product on here I'm going to leave that much on there and I'm going to shave it all flush like I did with the other one here all right and that's it I'm going to leave it like that let it dry and then I'm going to remove it I'm going to make sure I cut the corners out I want my corners to be perfect so I'm going to follow the line here okay cut off all this extra I don't need it Take off all this extra. Okay, now I'm going to run this knife along the top so that it's as straight as it can be. I'm going to take off all this extra that I don't need. Okay, slowly. Just take it off. Don't go too deep here. Remember, you've only got painter's tape underneath here. So I just want to take off just the excess. Okay, as you can see, the excess here. Just taking that bit off before it completely dries. That way I know I've got a uh, pretty straight line there. As this stuff gets harder, it becomes easier to handle. There we go. As you can see, I've got a straight line along the top now. It's pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's just a matter of uh, shaving it. Okay, so if you take a close look there, as you can see, it's pretty straight along the top now. The stuff's getting pretty hard now. Yeah, it's drying up nicely. So I'll leave this overnight and we'll come back in the morning and I'll uh, finish it off for you guys. Just leave it here to dry. Okay, so now I'm just going to slowly take it out. 
and there you go now as you can see I've got that straight line all the way across so now all I have to do is wait for it to dry completely and then sand it all back and uh, I'll have everything all the holes filled in I'll have the straight line I was after and the unit will fit directly back into it so we'll come back once it's completely dried and uh, we'll begin to shave it down okay so now that I have it all dry I'm going to sand it down and make it flush with the bezel it's pretty strong it's pretty uh, solid now so that's a really good sign it's like panel beating it gets thinner and thinner okay we just need to get it to the same thickness as the bezel Slowly but surely, we are getting it. It's starting to look good. As you can see, it keeps getting thinner and thinner. But we're trying to get it as flush to the uh, plate as possible. Okay, we're getting there now because we're starting to scratch the bezel itself. So I'm going to go slowly now and just make sure I don't scratch too much of the bezel. It's getting really flush there. getting more flush as we go along you can see it just it has a little lip still As always, I clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. We just spray some all over the surface. We clean all up all the excess dust. All right, there we go. We clean the inside, wipe everything down so that once we go to carbon wrap it, it will stick really well. Okay, so just make sure you get all corners everywhere that the carbon fiber wrap is going to stick on. You want to wipe it down really well. All right, is now. We're going to carbon wrap it again. What I've done here, 
I've just wrapped the two edges first just to see if I can get away with it. Obviously, if this doesn't work, I'm just going to have to buy a bigger piece. But I wanted to give it a try first. Okay. okay so I'm just going to make sure I cover the bottom part. Alright guys, so this is the final product here. So as you can see, it really did come up really nice. You know, there are no longer any gaps anywhere and I managed to fill in all the gaps. This product ended up being a really good product to use and I'm very happy with the way this bezel turned out. Obviously, the way I wrapped this was just due to the fact that I wanted to get it um, together. but because I wrapped both sides first and then used the remainder to wrap the front bezel, I have a line here that you can see. This may pass for some of you out there, but I'm not completely happy with it. So what I'm going to do is, I've already ordered a bigger piece of carbon fiber, and once I get that uh, bigger piece in, I'll be able to wrap it in one go. And that way I won't have any lines on the side here from uh, wrapping the sides first and as for the the back as you can see you just have a little bit of the putty showing but that's not a big problem because all you really care about is what the front looks like everything else is going to be hidden but if you are pedantic and anal like some people are and you want to shave that off so not a lot of it is showing then you can do that but i'm not going to worry about it too much because i'm pretty much happy with the way it came out so now i'm going to install it in the car and uh, give you guys a final look at what it looks like that's what it looks like once fully installed i'll turn on the light here just to show you guys what it looks like it really did come up very nice guys i really cannot complain about the way that looks everything works as it should turn off the light just to give you guys a glimpse the carbon fiber is really nice there's no gaps at all it really did come up very nice how to fill in all the gaps of your climate control once you update it to the w207 climate control and that brings us to the end of the video so if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads until next time guys this is mike with mike's vlogs signing off